Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Pete and Jeremy's D&D time. This is uh, game two this evening, an adventure I have entitled Oromp Lore. Um, and it's it featuring not these four heroes that you see upon the screen now, but there are, in fact, five. We have one of the legendary, the rare, five-player adventures going on um, this week due to some scheduling kerfuffles. But you know what? I think it's going to be a blast. So let's just get cracking. Let's just start rolling. Um, first hero that we've got, a new adventurer here in the lands of D&D time. Um, a, a goblin, in fact, as far as I've heard. Um, Spuds. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. oh, God. Ugh. Hey, Spuds. How's it going? Oh, oh you know. Okay. How are you? Just... Huh? How are you? I am great. Oh. Um but is there something wrong with your voice? No. Okay. Is well, something but... wrong with your voice? Yeah. No, I'm I'm a little sick. I think I have a little bit of a cold. Ah. Like I believe that's normal goblin voices for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, well Spuds, what uh, what's brought you to become an adventurer in Bartholomew's Adventuring Company? Oh, you know? I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? I, I want to learn things. <laughs> Learn stuff. You want you want to learn. Yeah. All right, Spud. No one will teach me math. Oh, oh, you want to learn some math? Yeah. Now, Spuds, you know there are, there are certain goblins in the land of D and D time that have a very very dark disposition about math. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Spuds, welcome to Land of D&D Time. Uh, welcome to Zombies Adventuring Company. It sounds like you're kind of a native here in the Land of D&D Time. Um, okay. I hope you have a great adventure and good luck on your math. All right. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I, I like you, Spuds. Uh, no one thanks me. No one says thank you when I tell them to have a good adventure. I'm sorry. sorry. You're welcome. Thank you, Spuds. Yeah. Well, anyway... Um, our next hero this evening is the one and the only, the Professor Dingleheimel. How are you, Professor Dingleheimel? Greetings and salutations! Now, Professor, is that, a, is that an honorific, or is it actually, is your first name Professor? No, no, it's a, t I mean... No to which I question? Am, I am a professor. I am okay. a professor, but it's not my first name. I thought it was one of those crazy coincidences where it was both your first name and... No, okay. What is my your first name? My first name is Beckel. B-E-K-I-L. Beckel Dingleheimel. Yeah, actually, that works pretty well, huh? Yes, indeed. I have one thing to say to Spuds, though. Be careful of your path. I really hope we do we do make good friends, because I hate math goblins so much. Oh, no, teach you math? I'll teach you all sorts of things. Oh, no. and oh. Yes, and, oh. and anyways, I really hope this adventure helps me to further my knowledge. I've been looking for more things magic related in order to further my technology. Well, Dingleheimel, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I guess we'll just have to roll the dice and find out. Um, yes, careful. indeedy. Be careful about teaching Spud's math. I could see him literally doubling in power after just one adventure. I doubt if it. he if he doubles in <laughs> power, like I'll math. make sure his power explodes. I I might or might not be kidding. Anyway, welcome to Clyde. I hope you enjoy your adventure. Thank you. Um, our third hero this evening is um a character that's been here for a while, but. Maybe picks and chooses their adventures a little a little bit more than some of the other heroes. Uh, John, uh, John Gallinodal, welcome. Oh, thank you. It's uh, good to be here. So, John, um, how have you been? What have you been up to since we last saw you? I believe we last saw you in a tree adventure, right? You were going down for a... It's, uh, a tree, and uh, I had to crawl on my hands. Yeah. And, uh, well, my hands. Like... Usually people say hands and knees. Yes, but unfortunately you are a disabled adventurer. Um, you you kind of rely on your wheelchair most of the time. I, I make humor. It's awful of Bartholomew to send you on an adventure like that. 
I mean, it's fine. I manage well enough. So uh, have you been doing anything um, in- enjoyable with your time since uh, since you went out last? I've just been exploring the lands. You know, this land is magical. Mm-hmm. Well, John, yeah. welcome back. <laughs> Any cool magic stuff you find or just, just exploring? Uh, you'll see. Oh. All right. New well, magic, John, well, I must see. Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited now. I'm with Dingleheimel. Uh, well, welcome back. I, I hope you have a great adventure. And I'll tell you, I think this one might be a little bit, um, a little bit more reasonable than the last one. So, of course, welcome again. And uh, next we have Lana Co here. Uh, Lana, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Now, Lana, you're a relatively new initiate to Bartholomew's company. Um, I'm wondering, how have you found the adventuring life? Is it like all you remembered? Well, aside from my uh, missing my sea legs. Hmm. So you were, you were a sailor before? Yes. I guess that, you know, I, people think of sailors and, you know, minotaurs as sailors. I just didn't want to make the assumption, um, though that is generally a pretty pretty reliable guess if you had to guess a minotaur's profession. Um, so why uh, why did you join up with Bartholomew's company instead of just going sailing again? Do you just, are you working up funds to buy a new ship or? Well, not right now. Uh, it's mostly to provide for myself. Uh, well, you know, Bartholomew's adventures, it, does, it, it tends to pay all right, depending on how much looting you do during your admission. So are you much of a looter type or are you kind of the, I, I get what I'm paid kind of person? Uh, I do a bit of both. Unfortunately, I, end, I, I end up breaking most things. Oh, I you're kill. more of a pillager type then. Well, not intentionally. <laughs> it's, just, it's understandable, of course. Well, it's like when when you have a giant axe, you know, you you tend to cleave things, including the stuff they're wearing. That's true, well, you know. And the worst part, right, is like what happens? You know, even if you try to just put the axe down, like just want to like lay it down on the floor. Half the time, you're gonna break something. At least maybe that's just me. I can't I can't balance my axe for my life. But uh, anyway, Lana, welcome back. I hope you have a great adventure this evening. Um, and last but certainly not least, the secret fifth adventurer this evening, uh, we have Moldock Mutlum. Moldock, how you doing? Oh, uh, doing great, great, excellent, awesome. Not really. Uh, oh, not really? No. What's wrong? Well, uh, you see that last adventure, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I may have accidentally, uh... Got some of these trash people mad at me. Mm-hmm. I stole now, their when tent. You say, when you say trash people, just yes. for, for the audience, you mean the people who live at the at, in the dump, right? Yes, the people who live yes. literally in the trash. They yes. are the people of the trash. They are trash people. Yes, of course. And what are they mad at you about? You stole their tent? Yes, I did. Was it a good tent? It, it reminded me of home. Uh, you know, home on the circus. It, oh, it, it was yeah. one of the old, the old um, one of Lemmick's old tents. Yes. Mm. Have you done anything with it? You set it up anywhere? Does it have any cool, like any cool magic left in it, or was it just kind of oh, garbage? Oh, oh, it, it was, it was garbage. But it, I, I can, I can, I'm gonna start a circus. It's gonna be great. Oh, really? Yes. Are you going to travel from place to place? Or is it just going to be kind of like a stationary circus? It's like a dungeon almost that people go into oh. and then die. Oh, oh, um, uh, I'm they'll go into, like... uh-huh. they're going to go there. Yeah. It's going to travel from place to place. Uh huh. People might die. Uh, well, you said might. So there is definitely hope here. Uh, Moldock, because you said might die, I'm can without any guilt in my soul, wish you good luck with your circus. I'm, uh, Thank you. Sure Jeremy, I hate agrees. to be the bearer of bad news, but we kind of lost someone in the chat. Oh, no. Thank you for the heads up. 
All right. Welcome. Welcome back, John. I'm sorry you just fell. You fell over. Yeah, it's fine. It happens. Yeah. Well, uh, well, welcome back. Um, and so our adventure will begin. Um, you all have been sent uh, to the Big Rock Candy Mountains. It is a magical land in the north of the lands of D&D time where ice cream rains down from the sky and covers the ground like snow, where cotton candy leaves grow on peppermint trees and all sorts of other wonders. And chocolates and sweets uh, are in abundance. Um, you have luckily just been teleported straight there by Bartholomew. Apparently the candy king, Lord Has, he's kind of a bro, um, has paid a lot of money to get some adventurers to help him out with the mission. And so as the adventure begins, you all appear uh, by this magic teleportation. You were in Bartholomew's shop but a moment earlier, but now you stand within a, um, well, a bit of a teleportation room. Uh, it seems like that's the only purpose of this chamber. There is a large kind of magical circle or sigil kind of engraved in the ground in a circular shape. Um, there are um, some strange pink-hued lights uh, up on the ceiling. They appear to be some sort of light emitting from inside little balls of cotton candy that illuminate this roughly 30 by 30 chamber. And there are maybe eight guards uh, in here, all kind of dressed in their Big Rock Candy Mountain Candy Kingdom attire. They have long spears of twisted licorice with... Um, kind of sharp uh, candy tips to them. And one of the guards um, looks to you as you all kind of appear here. Um, uh, you uh, must be the adventurers. Hello. Yes, indeedy. Uh, yeah, sure I am. Oh, here, uh, come join join my circus, or at least come and visit okay. it. It'll be great. Goblin, a hairy gnome, a clown? A yes, minotaur. I am a clown. And, oh, a human, thank goodness. Um, you must be the leader. He walks right up to you, John. Uh, yes, that's why I'm sitting in this regal chair that has wheels, so that my one of my subservients can push me around. Indeed. I go to the pushing position behind John. <laughs> okay. Now, John, you're a full-size, well, you're a half-elf, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the guard seemingly has mistaken you for a human. Or maybe he's just like half elves, humans, elves, close enough. Fair enough. But yeah. um, you're in a normal sized wheelchair. Spuds, you're a small creature. Mm. So you have to like reach up to get uh -huh. at the handle. Okay. Just well, as long I, as we're familiar. I, I can do it. I, I, I think it would be I fun. Have, I have a better idea, everyone, just to solve his little problem. I got him. The you guard sure? kind of looks between you all. Well, um, anyway. As you can uh, see, they're all eager, eager subservient. Yeah. Ah! Uh, well, uh, anyway, I, I am here, of course, to greet you, representing Lord Has the Bro, King of the Candy Kingdom. Um, and we have a mission that needs to be dealt with, preferably with some degree of secrecy. Mm. There That's has well. been recent raids upon some of the border villages outside of the Candy Castle. We believe, at least from what scouts we have seen or heard back from, or the threat may be the Lorpas. Can you tell us more about these beings? I'm scientifically curious. Yes. They're Terrible subterranean monsters. They have bright orange skin, hunched backs, eyes. Well, no real eyes, simply empty sockets where their eyes once were, and they make horrible candies beneath the surface and sing their wretched song. We thought we'd had them contained to beneath, beneath the surface, but somewhere in the sugar plum forest, they must have found a way out. Sounds great. Yes. So. No, not so great. I must do my scientific method. Oh. Um, you do that. Anyway, the, the, the Oromp Lorpas need to be sent back beneath 
the grounds or killed, whichever you can. What if what if we just relocated them someplace else? Would that be good enough? Sure. Okay, as great. As long as they never come back. And their yeah. terrible candy never makes its way here. Okay. Sounds good. It's absolutely disgusting. Rotten sweets. A bittersweet problem, if I say so myself. Indeed. The guard kind of looks between you all. Well, um, can I lead the way? Ah. Sure, you do that. And remember, discretion. So the guard uh, leads you th- uh, out of this area. You appear to be in a, a like a kind of like bunker-like building, maybe meant to contain this teleportation room in case anything hazardous or dangerous could come through the portal. Um, and yeah, you are led out. Um, you're led up some ramps uh, that are here. And eventually there's a big metal door bulkhead, which uh, is lifted open and exits onto the streets on the outskirts of um, the kind of capital of the Candy Kingdom, which is the city that surrounds King Candy's castle. And so, yeah, you're let out onto the streets and you can feel the biting cold. Uh, It is very, very chilly here. There's lots of wind. And you can see little flecks of ice cream snow raining down all around. Um, However, the wind tastes kind of minty. There's like a mintiness to it. Mm. um, Which you're not really used to with wind. I look at uh, the guard and I say, Oh! Yes? Bunks! And I start pushing John. All right. It's just through those gates over there. The guards will be awaiting you. Oh, uh, bye. Bye. Goodbye. Have a last call. Farewell, friend. You as well. Good luck. Let us go. Oh. So, we are in the capital now. Where shall we go? I am assuming we have to see the person who hired. Down through the gates. Okay, so you want to go over to the gates? That's where he said to go, right? Yeah. No. Oh. Okay. Yeah, as you as you kind of push John toward the gates, um, as the five of you make your way over there, um, there are these very very large gingerbread towers with some large gingerbread gates that kind of go between them. You see big links of licorice chain that would be used to pull the gates open and close. And uh, you hear them kind of strain, and you hear them, they're like, they like stretch because they're made of licorice. So it's not the like clickety clickety clank of chains. It's just like, we're like, uh, squeak. Uh, and the gates are pulled open for you. The guards don't say anything. Oh, thanks. Uh, beyond the gates, you see out of the town, um, you see the edge of the sugar plum forest some way ahead. Um, you see trees of gingerbread with horrible green and leaves and purple plums hanging from them. Let's go. I think we're going that way. Yes, indeed. I and, and I just merely skip along. Okay. So you're going to skip ahead, <laughs> Dingleheim, uh, or? Yes, because it feels like such a wonderful wonderland. Okay. I'm totally going to take samples for later. That's the time for. So, Dingleheim, are you just like going up to random things and like chipping off a bit of a rock that's made of chocolate, or scooping up some of the ice cream snow that is on the ground? Yes, actually. Yes, I am. Putting them in little vials. Yes, I'm putting them all in little vials. This will be great for my new science experiment. Yes. So Diggleheim was running around just like, woo, all excited, having a great time. Uh, thankfully, it's not snowing very heavy here. You imagine it would be really rough if the ice cream snow was coming down hard, but it's really light right now. Um, and if you want to do anything as you make your way, it's about a mile, you think, uh, of a walk. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely walk. taking one of those plums and just eating it. Yummy, oh, yummy. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not the candy cane forest, the sugar plum forest. Um, yes. Well, you're you're not quite there yet. You're about a mile away. Do you guys oh, want to okay. just walk there? You can just get there. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna just walk there. there. I'll eat some ice cream. Okay. Um, yeah, eating some ice cream, cream sounds is good. Flavorless and bland. Uh, is it? 
Is it? So what, how does this work? If you're a believer uh, in the okay, cloud? Okay, so if you're a believer in the great big cloud, oh, a powerful cloud entity that resides in the Big Rock Candy Mountains, then you actually experience a sweet um, and crisp and r rich but not overbearing flavor uh, of uh, in, the, in the snow. Are you a believer in this cloud? Yeah. Oh, then yeah, it tastes great. Really this good. Good. Right, let's go. Okay. Yeah. So you, you get to the edge of the sugar plum. <laughs> yeah, Lana, you take a big minotaur handful. Just, mm -hmm. nope, nope, not as good. Nope. I, don't know. I eat whatever she threw on the ground. It's just like it's like eating for you, Lana. It's like eating frozen heavy cream. Just like, it's, it's like normal snow. <laughs> it's it's the texture's worse than normal snow though. But uh, oh, cool. I I'm gonna just take a little bit of this for later. Uh, I'm not gonna eat any of it. Refreshing. Let the water in Bloom's garden. Okay, so yeah, you, you make your way to the edge of the Sugar Plum Forest, and uh, yeah, you see up ahead of you, it is uh, kind of dark and foreboding uh, compared to the rest of the forest that you've seen so I mean, the rest of the, the area you've seen so far. It's been very brightly colored in the Candy Kingdom. Um, there, have been, there were banners, and uh, houses were painted bright, shiny colors, and there were gumdrops adorning things. Now that you're out here, you're looking at this just, just dark forest of browns, greens, and just purples from the little plums that are hanging everywhere. But there appears to be a, a path, or what work, what counts for one. Awesome. Uh, they're going into the thing. Plum? Oh, I'm eating a plum for sure. Oh, and and this place is so much better than back there. Too bright. Didn't like it. Total the worst. Just saying. Okay. This is great. Back there was also great. <laughs> uh, as you take a bite of the plum, uh, Maldock, it is incredibly juicy and you get plum juice all over you. Um, Fantastic. It tastes like a plum. Oh, this is this is awesome. This is the best. I get some plums. Okay. Very, Don't very want a plum? interesting. I'm still taking samples of anything. Of everything. <laughs> do, 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 do. So much better seems than over there. Tastes so much better. Just saying. It seems that I'm the only adventurer that has been around long enough to know that you do not eat things which come from these candy mountains. You don't want a plum? The reason that you don't eat things from the candy mountains is it will rot your teeth and you'll become one of the candy zombies. That oh, have to be slain yeah. by the great hero of these mountains. I throw the plum away. Wait. It lands on. in the ground. I don't Wait want a to become a zombie. Wait, you become a zombie? Yes. Uh, awesome. Sure I grabbed like five more plums and I start point. eating more. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that again, Switch? I'm sorry, add John. I said, are you sure you're not mistaking it for just a sugar rush? I'm very sure. The great hero Asbjorn might have to come and slay. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Isaac, like, oh. I grabbed five more plums. Sounds really cool. Tell me more about Asbjorn. Asbjorn is a great hero in the lands of D&D time. Unlike a lot of the adventurers from Bartholomew's shop, he actually does some useful things. Oh. Like protecting the realm from sugar zombies. Sounds cool. Sparky. He is a As colossal grab, like, man. Over 40 feet tall. And he Tell has a beautiful tall. reindeer named Matilda. Really cool. I grabbed five more plums. So you're just shoveling plums into your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. As I'm listening to the story, I just keep eating. I also start eating the plums again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
okay. You My... just, you just totally forgotten. I fi I finished this. I finished literally like getting a ton of vials and stuff filled, and like my scientific curiosity is f fully satisfied. Oh, let's 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 first. keep going. Let's go. Come on. Let's let's continue. Yes, yes. Let's go. As, as much as I love this wonderland, we must fill our task at hand. Oh, what's the square root of pal? <laughs> that is a that is a mystery that even I still am trying to solve. I, I have the answer. I have the answer. The square root of pi is four pieces of pi. Problem okay. solved. Thank you. So, as you've been traveling uh, and having these conversations, you've been getting kind of deeper and deeper into the sugar plum forest, and it's gotten darker and darker. Um, you see that this is some kind of strange green um, cotton candy in the leaves of these uh, trees. You don't know what it what it is. Oh, I'm sorry. That is the leaves of these trees. Um, t trying to like taste it, you wouldn't be able to quite discern what it is. Um, but it doesn't taste good. Whatever it is, it's a little bitter. Um, and yeah, as you're going, you're starting to see signs of activity. Um, the first thing that you come across is a uh, an abandoned uh, sledge, like a sled. You see, there are some felled cotton candy trees nearby. And yeah, it looks like there was a sign of like some fighting here because there are some chopped up logs out on the sled. There's some uh, some red snow. You don't see any bodies though. Does the blood oh, leave a trail? Sign. I'm gonna. Uh, yes, there I, definitely is a trail. I'm gonna try to try the the the, the red snow. See what it. It tastes a little bit like iron. Mm. Um, 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 excuse me, but I think that's blood. I know, and I eat more. Okay. No. But, but, but we need to follow that trail. <laughs> okay, the, follow the me snow. then, and I just follow the trail, eating the snow as. Oh, uh. I look at I'm you know I'm gonna look at the axe now. It's while this guy, while this crazed person eats the blood. I'm I'm rather concerned. Okay. Uh, yeah. What do you want to look for on the axe? Like. Any sign that it's like foreign from the, like if it's like from this land or no? Yeah, uh, could you want me like an investigation check as you're kind of going to look at it? Indeed. Goggles. Get to work. Yeah, you put down your goggles, boop, and oh no, they're covered in they're iced over. <laughs> and you you just end up trying to clear off the goggles. Um it just looks like a woodcutter's axe. Um once you finally get your goggles uniced. Uh, you can see that Moldock is some ways away, taking a couple steps, getting a big full of, of bloody snow, shoving it in his mouth. Um, he's destroying a lot of the trail as he goes, but at least he's leaving a bigger trail. Just harder, maybe, to get any clues out of it. Uh, I'll, need to, I'll need to figure something out for these weather, for these icy conditions later. I'm going to follow him. Okay. Here, hand me that axe. I do so. I'm going to take a look at it oh, as, okay, uh, so... I, as I'm being pushed through this snow. Yeah, absolutely. And your your wheelchair seems to cut through the ice cream snow super easily. Uh, it seems to have absolutely no difficulty getting through it. Ah, see, also that's because of the new Bartholomew invention, the wheelchair snow piercer. I gesture down at my feet. You can get this baby for the low price of four ninety nine at your local Bartholomew shop. Wow! How much did he pay you to, to do that? I am not <laughs> That's at, funny. Uh, at freedom Bartholomew to divulge money. that information. That's hilarious. You think Bartholomew pays? Ha! 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 I laugh at your. I laugh at that wheelchair. I could design something even more efficient. Okay, so you guys are going. Uh, can you roll me an investigation check as well? I mean, your perception is also okay if you're just looking at the axe. Uh, as you all begin to follow this trail. Um, investigation. Uh, investigation. Right. Yeah, investigation, perception, anything like that. Yeah, it... 
right, another <laughs> crit fail. Uh, yeah, you're looking at it. It's just an axe. It's like maybe like a, a woodcutter's axe, you think. Um, it's a little large for just a woodcutter's axe, but whatever. About the right size for me. Yeah, actually, you think it would be about the right size for you. Do you want to? Do you want to take a look at it, Lana? <laughs> if you pick it, or do you, John? Do you let? Do you let Lana have it? Yeah. All right. You have an axe now, Lana. I pick it up and. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Nearby. You, you're gonna just swing it at a nearby tree. Okay. okay. Yep. Um, you embed it in a nearby tree pretty easily. Nothing Actually, the trees are made of cotton candy. You pretty much you slam right through the tree. Actually, it's made of cotton. It's made of um, gingerbread. So yeah, you obliterate a tree. Wow. That was from that... You wonder why he needed an axe to begin. That was quite unnecessary. Problem of blocks for murder. Well, and it's interesting because Moldock, the blood trail just keeps going. It's just more and more and more blood. And uh, as you're kind of going, you notice there are tracks that kind of are also here. You haven't bothered to look at them because the blood trail is so obvious at this point. Um, and there gets to a point where you see all of the different footprints uh, kind of diverge. They all go in different directions, a whole bunch of them. Um, can I, can I the identify what these prints are? Well, you would be able to in just a moment because, Moldock, as you like reach down to scoop up another bloody snowball, mm -hmm. um, and you see that a bunch of the tracks split off in different directions. Yeah. You see the blood trail continues ahead. But you also feel like, in this moment, maybe you're being watched. And you just hear this deep kind of, all of you can hear almost barely audible on the wind, a kind of chant. And it goes, uh, And it gets louder and louder. And then you begin to see kind of orange shapes moving in the trees in all sorts of directions around you. Mm. And they seem to be converging upon you. Mm. How's it going, guys? What's up? Mm, it appears they're trying to ambush us. But they, but oh. they appear... But we already see them coming. Silly yeah, they roll very badly on their stealth. Okay, ah. so... Uh, apparently, these orange Oromp Lorpas are coming after you. How's it going, guys? What's up? Uh, well, you don't see them quite clearly yet. Uh, oh. Yeah, and they're going to attack you. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, can you all roll for initiative for me? As the Oromp Lorpas <laughs> begin to converge upon your current location. How's it going, guys? Uh, I can already see how this night's going to turn out like. Well, look, they don't seem to be paying attention. They're really rude. Oh, you're going to you're gonna be rude? That's not a good idea. Blah! Well. All right. Uh, we will start with the top of the initiative. Moldock, actually, you're first to go. What would you like to do? Oh. Um, do I see them in, inside of me? No. I mean, you see, like, blurs of them as they, like, whoosh, whoosh, jump between trees in the distance. They're, like, rushing up, trying to sneak around, coming towards you. Do I have a general idea of where they Yeah, they have some heavy cover, but you could make an attack against one if you'd like. Oh, I'm not making no attack. No, no. Sure. I'm not that kind of wizard. I'm this okay. kind of wizard. Go to sleep. Okay, you're gonna try and put some of them to sleep. Indeed. All right, so you just blast to sleep out in, uh, I guess, just any direction where you see them. Yes, exactly. Okay. 
Um, you see one of them like rushing between trees, just collapse and fall, and mm. just fall into the snow. Uh, okay. Good night. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to do, Malta? <laughs> go back uh, a little bit because they haven't attacked yet so i'm gonna go back and towards my party a okay, little bit so you, okay i mean right now you guys are all kind of clustered around john yeah Most i'm gonna I, kind of I back imagine. up a little bit get a little They're, bit yeah. farther back. okay the lorempas uh a bunch of them you hear uh, and they run out of the out of the woods around you and you see their hideous hunched creatures. They don't have any eyes. They're just kind of stuck shut, um, almost like they've been sewed shut. And these horrible orange lorpas run for. They have big clubs made of uh, look like bones with little spikes stuck out of them. Uh, and yeah, they rush forward uh, toward all of them. So first, uh, we're gonna have one going at Yulana. It swings with his bone club. It gets a twelve. Miss. Okay. Another one is going to rush toward uh, you, Professor Vingleheimel. I get a 14. Ow! That oh hurts. no! It clubs you for four bludgeoning damage, and two of the little bone spikes stab you for an additional two piercing as this thing make candy from you. Uh, and then another one is going to rush over and try and swing at John. John, it rolls a 10 which I assume misses you. Mm -hmm. And then one of them is going to go for you. John but... scooches the wheelchair back. And... <laughs> Just whoosha! Expert scooch, an eight against you, Spuds. No! Alrighty, and the fifth one is currently asleep. Uh, you only see five right now, but you don't know how many more there could be. Um, we're back at the top of the initiative with Mulda. Well, hmm. I have a sleeping one, right? There is one asleep, yep. Okay, and then there's a few that are next to me, or yeah, close by, all, right? Yeah, there are four of them that just bolted up to you. Okay, how's it going? You. None of them attack me, but they're they're attacking my party next to me. Okay, mm -hmm. no problem. Um, I'm going to walk up to one and uh, say, Here, uh, hold my hand for real quick, as I joy buzzer them. Okay, the Lorempa looks and goes, and holds out its hand. Uh, and you zap it with your joy buzzer. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, okay. Here it is. Hold on. Okay. Five lightning damage. Nice. Uh, he goes, uh, he gets zapped and takes a bunch of damage. Or takes five damage. Appreciable. Oh, excellent. Fantastic. And I think this spell has an additional. Mm -hmm. He cannot take opportunity attack, right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And I back away. <laughs> I go back to where I was before. Oh, the or the orp the orump lorpas are uh, wearing just kind of tattered clothing. Uh, currently. Uh, all right, it's the lorpas turns. Oh wait. Yeah, did you skip? I skipped everyone. everyone. Dingle, you yeah, can go now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I I have you know. Okay. I skipped literally everyone. <laughs> Uh, are they literally are they literally surrounding us? Uh, currently, yeah. One of them just got joy buzzered though, so you think you could just run past him? Hmm. Well, I had one idea, but I don't want to hurt my friends, so I have a different idea. I will run past the one that he shot. Okay. And then I shall, and then I have a new. Wonderful invention! Go Scorch Rocket! Alrighty. You reach into your kind of, I imagine you have like a little backpack or something that you pull these things out of? Yes, indeedy! So you just open up a flap and zoom, 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 your little missiles come flying out and slam into one of the orm, uh, one of the Lorpas. Uh, you hit with everything. And yes. I, feel like, I have a feeling that That's... critical hit is going to be pretty bad for this poor Lorpa. Are you going for the one that was just hit, or a different one? Well, let's just say if it goes for the... If it, um... Let's just say if it, like... If one of them would die from this, it would go for another one. Sure. Like, like if yeah, if yeah. one of the missiles already kills one, it'll all, it'll just go for a different one. No problem. Go ahead but and the, give me the but heat. The, but the first one I'm going for is the one that got zapped, so... All right. 
five fire damage. He's still kicking. All right, now it? he's not kicking anymore. Okay. That orm, uh, that uh, Lorpa gets blasted by your exploding fire missiles and collapses, uh, smoldering heap in the snow. In okay, front of John. and last one's at a different one. Okay. 15 fire damage. Right, 15 fire damage. That one also is blasted straight up. Uh, it collapses into the snow ahead, uh, around you. Which one was that? Uh, that was probably the one you wanted for you, Spuds. Okay. Yes, indeed. My imagine... newest invention is working perfectly. Alrighty. Um, speaking of John and Spuds, John, it's your turn, then Spuds. So, John, what would you like to do? There are two Lorms <laughs> still around you. You see a couple smooth more. Smooth transi transition, Jeremy. Yeah, smooth super smooth. transition. Uh, there's only two left? Uh, there are only two left, but you see there are more coming up from the uh, way uh, ahead of you. They're coming like, okay. back down the blood path, seemingly drawn by the Lorpa's cries. Uh, John is going to pull out an old uh, hunting rifle and shoot at one of these. Okay. Yeah, and it works out because... Uh, um, Dingleheim will just kill the one that attacked you. So you just kind of aim it around at the one attacking Lana and blast him for two fire damage. Uh, as your hunting rifle uh, blasts and hits the Lorpa in the uh, in the cheek and it goes Argh! you see the, the bullet exit the other side of its mouth. Um, but it just doesn't seem to like care at all. It doesn't bleed. It seems like it's almost made of an orange toffee. All right, then John's gonna move back a little bit more away right. from these Ormpalorpa. Uh, Ormpalorpas, you mean? <laughs> yeah, no problem. You scoot away within your wheelchair some more. Um, all right, move to Spud Set. All right. There are two nearby, and about probably four more. You think coming down the trail ahead? All right, I'll uh, I'll dive into the snow and take the hide action as a bonus action with my mm -hmm. goblin nimble escape. You duck beneath the snow and are hidden. All right, and uh, I'll come back out and stab one. The player character goblins actually get that feature. Mm -hmm. that's, yes, that's they so do. Good. Player, go player goblins get nimble escape. It's like basically they're automatically rogues, even if they're that's seventeen. Awesome. Well, <laughs> seventeen will hit, and it's a good thing you have the seventeen too. You come up under the Oron Blorpa and shank it in the back, and it goes. And, I saw this guy's on a candle fucking tour. <laughs> and you stab him through the back, and he collapses, toast upon the ground. He turns just into toast. Exactly. That's amazing. That's yeah, he's not actually pretty toast. amazing. He's, he's, he's just the dead form or on form. Oh, oh! I thought he turned into toast. That would be the tour got super evil. Uh, anything else you'd like to do, Spuds? Oh, um, walk around. Okay. All right, we move to uh, to Lana. Uh, it's your move. All that's left is the Oromp Lorpa that is currently on you, and you see there are four more Oromp Lorpas coming up the path ahead of you. Would you like to do anything, Lana? Lana? Oops, sorry, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> um, uh, how many are left? One. Uh, there's one that's right near you. Well, I may as well finish it off. Put the poor thing out of his mouth. Alrighty. A swing with your great axe will absolutely connect. Um, well, minimum roll on, on the great axe, unfortunately. I know, right? The great axe you embed into the arm of the Oron Lorpa, and it goes kind of veers away. Um, you take out like a chunk of its arm, but it seems to still be kicking. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, I don't have anything else. To do. Alrighty. So we're going to move to the Lorpas. Uh, that one Lorpa who's still there will ah, candy from you. Uh, it will yell and swing its spiky bowing club at you again, Lana. And it gets an 11, rolling miss. terribly and missing. 
Uh, the other four Oram Lorempas that are rushing ahead, you see three of them are just more of these, you know, crazed orange hunched beings with their bone uh, bone clubs. But one of them appears to be holding some, something of a, a bone staff, it almost looks like. And they're wearing oh, a big uh, cloak that is far too large for them and kind of drapes behind them, dragging along the snow. That looks like an owl bear pelt. Ah, that's and, neat. Uh, that Oramp Lorempa, well, all the Oramp Lorempas are going to do things. The three that are in the front rush forward to the three people in the front, which right now I believe are Dingleheimel, Moldock, and Spuds. Um, yeah. Oh, so no, I backed up. I, I said I went forward, shocked him, and then backed up. Back to where I was. I still think you're the furthest one up, though, of those three. Okay. Or like, one of them's going at each of you. So, Moldock, a 23 against you. Hold on, wait, wait. That would normally hit me. That would uh -huh. normally hurt. Uh huh. It's it would it would normally, but I have a thing. Uh huh. Okay. So first off, um, uh, my AC is to start is fourteen. Sure. And that's twenty three, right? Yep. Hold on. Uh, I don't how know many how hours for? This one, but good luck. Four. Plus, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh-huh. All right. Arcane deflection. That adds plus four to my AC. No, that adds plus two to your AC. Plus two to my AC. Oh, I'd still yeah. be hurt. That, that yeah, I'd still be hurt. Hold on. Still gotcha. Wait, I got a thing. Hold on. That would be 16, right? I think you're thinking a shield. No, I'm not thinking a shield. Okay. I don't think anything can save you. That's 16 oh, no. plus 4 is 20. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Yeah. I think you just rolled real well. Yeah. You get clubs. Nine points of damage. Uh, oh. The orange Lobo clubs you. Another one goes for you, Dingleheimel. Ah, oh, my goodness. And critically hits you. Oh. Ah, ugh. I'm not prepared. Points. I'm not prepared for melee combat, you fool. Uh, and then the third one going at you, Spud. Uh, crits you. Oh, no. Uh, oh. So for a lot of damage, oh, my God. Spuds is unconscious. <laughs> Spuds collapses upon the ground, uh, grievously wounded by the Oramp Lorpa. Uh, and the third one waves his staff around uh, and attempts to cast a spell. Okay. And just a second. Oh, I gotta roll that to public so you can see it. Uh, oh my goodness, he actually casts it. Uh, this one's coming at you, um, Lana. We gotta produce a flame. A ball of fire swings out and slams into you for two points of fire damage. Oh god. All right. All the rolls are polarized tonight. I'm either rolling hot or rolling not. That's the end of the Lorpas. Uh, Moldock, we're at your turn. What would you like to do? You see Spuds has been bludgeoned to the ground by a oh. lucky crit. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, man. Uh, I can't heal him. So I'm sorry, Spuds. You're, you're, it's, it's done for you. But <laughs> I can tell a really funny joke. Hey, uh, big casty guy. Want to hear a joke? Okay. Uh, what is the wisdom saving throw? What is a wisdom saving throw? Yes, that's a joke. <laughs> you made me laugh. All right, the Lorempo magician gets a six. Oh, uh, it's you laughing on the ground. That's the well. that's the joke. Ha ha ha. He uh, gets it. And it begins to laugh and collapse onto the ground. What was that, John? John, are you saying something? Oh no. Oh, okay. Uh, Lorempa Magician is now lying on the ground laughing. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Maldoc? There is a Lorempa in front of you. Oh, uh, how's it going, buddy? I'm just... He shrugs. Just... Do you okay. want to hear a joke? I can't tell you a joke. You're not good enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Professor Dingleheimel, there's a Lorempa in front of you, a Lorempa in front of your friend, and a Lorempa in front of the unconscious butt. How far away is the magician away from me? 
uh, laughing. Well, he's about 10 feet away, but he's laughing on the ground. I literally have one hit point left, by the way. Damn. Um, I mean, I can't but, help these crits, yo. But I have something for this, and I just cackle as I uh -huh. as I conjure up a cannon-like device and blast all four of them with a thunder blast. Oh damn! Yeah, that'll be it. That'll do it. Um, Con save, and I think they get blown back. If they fail, yep. Yeah, they get back, back ten feet. You gotta. Oh boy. And the magician and... gets it too. But the magician has disadvantage because he's unconscious. Alright, so the magician's gonna take Yes. So the magician's gonna take what one? And each of those is gonna take three? Yes. Yeah, also and... he needs to make he can make his wisdom save again. Okay. That's how vicious mockery works. Yep, I right, just sing it. You mean hideous laughter. Hideous laughter, my bad. Okie dookie. So he gets thrown oh he doesn't get thrown backwards, but he also doesn't stop laughing. Uh, the other three Lorempos that were upon you brrr, get blasted back ten feet. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? Mm. Mm. I'm going, you know, I think it'd be best if I just, you know, step back thirty feet. Do you want to try oh. and, like, grab Spuds and bring him back to safety too, or? Yeah, good idea. Okay, so you, like, grab Spuds and start dragging him back toward the rest of your team. Well, I'm um, no, actually I'm dragging him. I'm going thirty feet away. Yeah, like, I'm going thirty uh, feet back. Your team is further back, so yeah, you'd be moving towards your team. Yep. Okay, uh, John, it's your move. What would you like to do? You see Dingleheim retreating, carrying the unconscious body of Spuds. When they got knocked back, did they all get knocked back to gen generally the same? Yeah, pretty much. What do you ask? Hey. Be very careful with a stick of nitroglycerin. And I'm gonna toss a stick. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Oh, damn. All right. You're gonna burning hands him. Uh... That's a deep, that's a saving throw, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a stick of nitroglycerin. All right, we got one, two, three, uh-oh. What's and... the DC on that? I don't see it. <clears throat> the magician's still prone with disadvantage. Yes, he has disadvantage. And he yeah, gets what? to make another wisdom save if he takes that damage. We'll, we'll see if he's how he's doing. Um, what's the DC? I think he said 13. Oh, was it 13, John? 13? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, in that case, one of the Lorpas is still alive, but badly burned. Two of them are incinerated. Uh, I'm sorry, one of them is incinerated. So two of them are very, very badly burned, and the magician is... Uh, they're all very badly burned. They're just all on the brink of death, it looks like. Did oh, one of them sorry, die? There's actually one other Lorempo, the one that was attacking Lana, which is also dead now. So how many are alive currently? There are three alive, and they're all from the new wave. There's the magician and the, uh, the two other ones. Oh, excellent. Um, that was John. Is there anything else you'd like to do, John? No, I'll stay in the front and uh, block the attacks with my wheelchair. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Spuds, it's your move. Unfortunately, you are still unconscious. Oh boy, not doing great. Lana, there are three Lorempas remaining. All right, I'm going to use my uh, bonus action to activate Rage. Excellent. And then take a uh, swing at the nearest log. All right, you rush forward and swing with your great axe. Do you want to go for the magician or one of the other ones? Don't worry about that guy on the ground. You just don't take don't worry about the magician. He, 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 he's yeah, he's, I'll, he's I'll laughing. Take care of one of those small fry. All righty, you'll definitely hit. Uh, and you will chop it in half. Just right down the side. Uh, it is chopped clean in half, and you can see it doesn't seem to have anything on the inside of it. It is just like a solid piece of orange whatever it is. Uh, it's a terrifying creature. Um, but you just annihilate one of them. There are now two Lornpas left. Is there anything else that you would like to do, Lana? I've used both my actions, so... Okay. 
the warm puzz. Well, you're right in front of them, Lana, so they're going to go for you. Um, the one that is not cut in half will swing a bone club toward you. The roll an eight. And Total the other one. Huh? He makes a wisdom save. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see if he. Oh, it's at the end of his turn. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right. He's still laughing. Oh, man. Okay. So the Lorpas are done. Moldock, it's your move. There are currently two Lorpas left, both on the brink of doom. Oh, but also there's the one right. The, there's the one close by, right? Yes. They're both in front of me. Okay. Uh, he's close by, though. Uh, so. We're gonna just hit him with the wicked voodoo. The wicked voodoo that you do. <laughs> okay. The non laughing one? <laughs> yes, the non laughing one. Well, I don't know what your wicked voodoo is, but you. I think you miss him with it. Oh. Okay. Okay, that sucks. Oh, actually, wait, that's an AoE, right? That's, yes, uh, it is. So that yes, would it also is. hit the magician if you want. Yes, that's exactly right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. He fails the Wicked Voodoo, and the Magician is actually going to die to that. Oh, and by the way, it's a uh, sword... Uh, hold on. Uh, sword... something sword. It's Yo, I'm aware of the spell name. But... Sword burst. Sword like burst. That's wicked spell. Voodoo. What is your Wicked Voodoo? Are you a clown? Yes, I know. I just make a circle of Shadow Spears. Come on. What are of you talking about? Of course. Circle of Shadow Spears. Why did I not know this? Spirits. 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 Spirits of yes. Course. Um, as the uh, Lorpa magician collapses upon the ground, um, you notice the owl bear cloak also tumble upon the ground. Uh, and as the thing stops moving and you hear it just stop screaming and squealing, uh, you just hear like a jingling sound almost from it. You're not sure what it is. Okay. Um, but Professor Dingleheim, what's your move? There's one Lorpa left. Um, hmm. I'd rather not. I'm actually going to walk over to. Wait, wait. What? What? You said there's an owl bear. There's a an owl bear pelt cloak that the Lorpa magician was wearing before it died. But it's alive. No, that's just like a jingling sound. Oh. I'm going. Like it has I'm something to, in maybe going, pockets or something. Well, first of all, I need to. Um, I require some more health, so I need my shield generator. Act. <laughs> okay, you cast the shield generator. Anything else you'd like to do? I would like to go over to where the dead magician was and take all of his magic stuff. Okay. Yeah, you want to go? And, yeah, I want to see and also investigate the um, the pelt thingy. Okay, so that is an action to do that. Do you have an action, or is, was that false like the bonus? Yeah, action? false like oh. an action then. Okay. But I'm, but I will. Um, yeah, well, but I, that's it. For my... What's your investigation bonus? You might notice stuff just at a glance. Five. Okay, so that would mean your passive would be a fifteen. I think just at a glance you can see that um, first this pelt is way too large for this Lorpa. They probably stole it from someone. Uh, and secondly, you can see that inside there appears to be a flask as well as some berries. What about the staff itself? Is the staff any? No, or... it's, uh, it's just it's a, b a bone staff. Bone staff. Nothing staff. magical. Curses. No, you doubt it. Then I get well. I'll look into it later. But I'm just gonna watch the battle. Dingleheimel. I mean, sorry, John. There's one Lorpa left. Is it prone or no? Uh, no, he's not prone. No, not currently. Okay. I'm going to reach out and say, Joy Buzzer, is that how this... <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you you obviously didn't say the special words. You, you, you failed. <laughs> That's what happens. Exactly what you just said is what happens. Moldock yep. just looks at you disappointedly. Is there anything else you'd like to do, John? Uh, I'm gonna move away anyway. Okay. So you right. can make an op attack if you want. Oh, um... But I'm, mo I'm moving towards uh, the gob. Yeah, I don't think he was actually close enough to you to do that. Mm -hmm. I oh. think you got him without that. Yeah. 
No. Okay. Well, could could I have moved to the goblin and used the potion instead as my action? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so you're going to heal Spuds? For eight. Okay. Spuds, you feel the sweet, refreshing drink of, of healing potion. Oh, oh thanks. Uh, and... in, in case you forget, Jeremy, it's the uh -huh. bitter, awful, burnt taste of coffee shop. Oh, yeah. It tastes like coffee shop uh, coffee. Diner, diner coffee. Oh, that was great. <laughs> it sounds like a delicacy for a goblin. Spuds, you're awake and it's also your turn. Those guys are rude. I must. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously didn't say the special magic words. This guy is one of those knights. I'm gonna have this now! Spuds buries himself in the snow immediately. Lana, it's your move! There's one Oron Blorpa remaining. Okay, there's probably not. There are no Oron Blorpas remaining now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, this I'm guy gets it. Down. He knows how to say the magic words. It's called Grah! Great Axe! That's the words. <laughs> and the Oron Blorpas. Uh, around you seem to be all defeated. There is no blood from them, but there's plenty of blood from you all. Um, yeah, what would you, uh, what would you like to do? You survived the ambush. Lick off the blood off of my body. <laughs> Let's work Your together blood. to investigate this strange, magical owlbear pill. I'm already on it! Within. I want, I want to, I want, must learn more magic. I, I understand purposes. that you're very eager, but sometimes you need to take time to learn all the different aspects of these things. Let me show you, and I'm going to give advantage to Dingleheimer. Ah. Dingleheimer, as John kind of helps you to examine this cloak, uh, you can go ahead and roll me an investigation check if you'd like, or it could be a perception check, or even a history check, or just whatever you'd ah, like. To... My goggles are much better now. John's helping you out, and as you're looking through it, uh, you notice a couple, you learn a couple. Um, the cloak itself is not inherently magical. It might be magically durable, but that's about it. Um, besides that, it in one pocket has a flask uh, with some kind of liquid in it. The flask is big. It's like maybe like a foot. It's a very large flask. It's just been dragging along. Um, the cloak is uh, probably meant or sized for a creature that is at least large, maybe larger. Um, and it was just dragging on the ground behind the Oram Blorpa. Uh, and you also find a dozen good berries. We probably shouldn't eat those. They might belong to someone. Look. And I guess with that high of a roll, you probably recognize this, John, as the famed owl bear cloak of Asbjorn, the frost giant. Well, that's not a good thing. Mm. What? Why not? Why? Well, if Asbjorn is missing his cloak, that means he's probably... Uh-huh. Oh, no! Which means that the sugar zombies are probably running wild across all of the mountain. We can't that be... That sounds great. Oh, come on, now! We must be optimistic. I'm sure he's okay somewhere. Well, uh, anyways, let me let me keep going following this blood trail. There's, it probably leads... Okay. So what'd you guys do with that axe you ran into back at the beginning? Did you just leave it back there? Or no, I think we got it. Me. Okay, so Lana's been carrying it. Yeah, uh, that's definitely, definitely an axe. Uh, probably a magical axe, you're guessing. Um, Sounds now awesome. That now that you're looking at it, um, John, that might be as Bjorn's magical axe. You're not sure. Hmm. Didn't seem magical when I swung it around. You obviously don't can, know the special incantations. Can <laughs> John magic, roll, probably, <laughs> you don't can know the John magic roll, Can John roll Arcana to dis discern the magical properties of these two things? Uh, yeah, sure. I think that's fine. 12 so, and 12. 
Yeah, and I imagine Dingleheimel, well, you're also looking into this. Um, yes, the maybe. magical prop, the logical properties are very simple between the two. They appear to just be particularly durable. They're it's like exceptionally they're durable. Or, they cannot magical. be destroyed by non-magical means. Precisely. Hmm. It, it appears this person you refer to must be a very good person at magic. I must learn from him. All right. As I follow the trail to see where it leads. Come, yeah, come, friends. We, let us take these belongings, and if we find the giant, we'll give it back to him. Uh, okay. I, I, I'm going to continue to follow this trail. See, see what I what I run. What what do okay. we get? Does anyone want to eat any of the good berries? No. We shouldn't do that. It's a bad okay. idea. Oh, these are Asbjorn's good berries. You should probably. Yeah. Yes, Bud. Can I help you? The channel has eight apples, and Sally has six apples. And they each give an apple to Bobby. How many apples do they both have left? None, because I stole Se them all. Seven and, seven and five. None, because I stole all the apples. How I many apples is that? Total. Zero, because I stole them all uh, and ate them all. Quit being rude to the poor goblin. As That's you're saying 12. that, Moldock has an apple. Uh, you don't know where Moldock got an apple, but... Moldock, you look down, you have an apple. Oh, see, see, I told you I stole all the apples. Can Come on. Apple? You look sure. down and you also have an apple. Apple. Do I have an apple too? I'm scared now. No. There are only two apples that were taken away. Wow. Well, I'm going to keep moving on. I want to find this giant. So you continue moving along. Are you guys trying to be like discreet at all, or are you just going? Yes. Uh, I'm going to try to convince. Just really wonder where this came from. I'm going to try to convince uh, Dingleheimer <laughs> to eat some of these good berries. Mm, well, they I can mean, really I... help your immune system, and they're very uh, good source uh... of proteins and nutrients. I decide to eat only two out of the twelve. Uh, yeah, they taste great. And no I get two hit points back. Yeah. Can I have two? Yes. Now, oh. let me ask you this. If you have two, mm. and Heimeldinger has two, mm -hmm. how many are left? None, because I took them all. Come on. God. Are you so why, are you so why are you so rude? Let let me let us teach this poor goblin. We goblet started math with twelve. Peace. Okay. Twelve. Twelve. <sighs> twelve minus two minus two. Okay. Ten. And then another two. Oh. Uh, as Yay! You say, as, as you say that, the earth just kind of tremors around you all. It's just wow. like. Roller. Like a little earthquake. And then you hear in the distance some kind of confused Oromp Lorpa, Oromp Lorpa. The chants of the Oromp Lorpas starting up in the distance up ahead of you. Hmm. Seemingly startled by the sudden shaking of the earth. This Are is they ahead of us? Idea. Yeah, they're definitely ahead of you. How many? Uh, you don't know, you can't see them yet. They're like a ways up. You want to I'll head towards the Orump Lorumpa sound. Alright, can everyone roll me a stealth check then as you're moving up? I'm going mm -hmm. to use my con I'm gonna use my monitor conjuration to conjure uh, to conjure a dagger. Okay. Oh, I don't I I no. That mm, um do I want that to happen? Okay, I'll let it happen. No, I don't want it to happen. Wait. Do I want it to happen like that? No, I don't want it to happen. All right, what you doing, buddy? I think... I see a 12, a 9, a 4, a 17, and a 7. I'm not going to get a 4. No. Uh-uh. Okay. I'm too good for... I'm going to say some... <laughs> uh, pause, pause. That's a hobgoblin trait, not a normal goblin trait. You're right, I'm a hobgoblin. <laughs> anyway. What if it's a oh, secret? But that's not good enough. Hold on. I'm also going to do that. Because I didn't think that four was good enough. 
It's not a saving throw, though. It's an ability. Oh, yeah. that's right. Okay, but anyway. You want to save your saving face for saving face later? Because it looks like everyone else also did bad. Okay, yeah, yeah I'll just... save it for later. No problem. I'll save my face later. Okay. So y'all are trying to sneak up, but it's hard to move quietly through all the snow. And as you're pushing through and you get to the edge of what appears to be a clearing, you see that there is a big tunnel that's dug up out of the snow. You can see a darkness beyond that seems to travel deep, deep underground cave. Um, but in the clearing, you see something else. You see what looks like uh, it was dragged out of this cave, a large stone sarcophagus of sorts. Um, not something you really expected to see. And you see about a dozen of these Oromp Lorpas uh, kind of in a circle, dancing, sort of. Or not dancing, but it gives a kind of a ritualistic dance as they chant their Oromp Lorpa song. But beyond that, you see there's a large uh, rotisserie stick above a huge bonfire. And hanging from that stick, bound to it by ropes, you see a frost giant bound and gagged. Is the frost giant alive? He looks alive. He looks like he's trying to struggle, but is tied up. Uh, okay. It looks like they're doing some kind of ritual about the Asbjorn. Phenomenon. You just call out. Yeah, that's that's where the... Uh, actually, you, did, you were the one who did do well for your stealth check, John, but you just call out. Yeah. All right, you call out Asgore and you go, oh! you know, the frost giant attempts to say, uh, and the Oromp Lorpas all look in your direction. <laughs> well, good job, John. Now I think we just got ourselves killed, but we're going to fight anyway. Okay. And, I, and I'm going to proceed to throw my dagger at one of them. All right, well, let's roll. Well, you guys did not successfully sneak up on them, and so we need to roll for initiative again. Yeah, very well. As the Oron Orpas <laughs> renew their assault. <laughs> How many roll. did you say that there were? There were a dozen of them. Oh. Sounds terrible. Alright. They all oh, make candy from you! Is, How far uh, did you say did. that Bjorn was? Uh, he is about 40 feet, and the Lorimpas are also about 40 feet. Okay. All right. So I got Dingleheimel, I got Moldock. Would the rest of you like to roll? Oh, I'm sorry, you did. I'm blind. Blah. All right. Uh, you're missing. All right, I am missing John. John, initiative roll. There we, there we go. go. John's rolling hot. Uh, all right, mm. Moldock, you get to roll first again. Doing, doing real good. Oh, like I know. I, I'm, I'm only good. What are you talking about? I, I'm the best. You don't uh -huh. know, but I, I am. I am the best. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get to use something that I didn't use before, so it's gonna be fun, and we're gonna see what happens. Uh, it's gonna be interesting, and uh, we're gonna see. All right, so, are you ready? Are you prepared? Because I don't think you are. No, no I'm going wasn't to, ready. I'm going to summon my awesome and fantastic clown bike. <laughs> you King. I... Okay, is, you, is that, you're now on a real... clown bike. What, what, what spell is that normally? It's Just not a clown bike. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> seriously, no, seriously, I really want to know what this is that. Longstrider. It's <laughs> But it is now a clown bike. It appears underneath you, Maldock. Where would one of you like to do? Ching! <laughs> you ring the bell? Okay. All right. Do you want to ride around at all? Um, I think that's not what it is. Not yet. That's my action. I'm just gonna, okay. I'm gonna wait where I am right now. They're about okay. 40 feet away. Maybe I'll back up just a little bit. Okay. Uh, to, so, so, but, but that, that, that's. I, I want them to be about 40 feet. Away. It's a good idea. All right, uh, Doctor Professor Dingleheimel, what would you like to do? 
Uh, how close is the one closest to me? Because you said they're all in a circle. Um, uh, 40 feet is the closest one. <laughs> I just look at the dagger in my hands and just get a nice, wonderful idea. Okay. I'm going to move 20 feet closer. I'm going to throw... I'm going to throw my dagger at at the closest one. Okay. Go ahead. Your conjured dagger <laughs> gets thrown out. Uh, you'll hit. Four damage, the I, dagger shanks him. Ah! And, then, and then I will use my remaining move to move back to ten feet. And, um, I... Hmm, this new invention should work. Let's try... As I move back 30 feet even more. So you're just retreating into the forest? Yeah. Okay. Basically, this doing the same thing as the other guy. Oh, All right, I haven't done I... anything yet. I, I'm, I'm still 40 feet away. I want him to be 40 feet away. Yeah, well, I'm about, like... Dingleheim was just getting back, just to be safe. Yep, yeah. all good. All right. Uh, John, that moves to you. I'm going to uh, target the axe, Asbjorn's axe. Okay. And according to the wording of, of catapult, uh -huh. it says if it strikes a creature, the creature makes a deck save. But uh -huh. there's another sentence that says the object and anything it strikes takes 3d8 bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say... Asbjorn, here! And I'm going to use the axe to cut the rope that is holding you catapult Asbjorn. Catapult the axe into the ropes. Yep. All right, go ahead and roll me the damage for your catapult as you launch it. 3d8. Aye, aye. Awesome. So you reach out, you grab the axe, and with Herculean strength, John, from yep. your wheelchair, you huck the axe. It boom, 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 spins through the air and slams into the ropes, binding this frost giant, shattering the uh, the pretty much log that was he was bound to, and destroying the ropes. Um, and he falls down, basically into the fire underneath him. Um, that's all that happens right now. But he seems to be free. Is there anything else you'd like to do, John? One arm. Uh, watch. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so you just sit there and you watch. Um, Spud, it's your move. <laughs> you hide under the snow. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's it. Excellent. Oh, you just hide. <laughs> You're also going to just watch. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it's Asbjorn's turn. You see the frost giant stand up, tear the um, cloth, the gag out of its mouth, and go, Ah! I am free! It is I, Asbjorn! Come to me, cloak and uh, axe! And holds up one hand, and his axe flies to his hand, and his cloak flies from wherever you guys were holding it to him. Uh, and he just begins to unload on these Ormpa Lorpa, I'm sorry, Oromp Lorpas. Uh, oh god. Believe it or not, I made him worse. Um, mm -hmm. He cleaves mm. one of them, and he cleaves the second one of them. Oh, wait, no, he, no, he still hits. They have 11 AC. All right. Actually, that doesn't kill the second Oromp Lorpa. So he only kills two of them as he shing, shing, begins to swing. He, he and only the kills call what, one, one of them. Huh? What, one of them. Right? He, one of them. And he bellows out, Matilda, come to me! Uh, and his voice echoes through the forest. Uh, it's the Lorpa's turn. Okay, there are now, how many left? Ten? Yes. Because you got one. Um, the Lorpas, a bunch of them will descend upon Asbjorn and begin to battle him. But two of them go over to the stone sarcophagus. And they throw themselves against it. And you hear the lid kind of grind and grind, and then <sighs> finally get pushed off. And the Ormpa, uh, the Oromp Lorpas, who have been chanting, Oromp Lorpa, make candy for you! 
they end their chant and they all cheer bar lormba and you see a gargantuan bemuscled oromp lormba rise from inside of the coffin all right wana it's your move how far away am i uh you are about uh from the coffin you're 30 feet from Asbjorn and the regular Oromp Lormpas, you're about 40. I'll head to the closest target. All right, so you run right at the huge, muscly uh, Oromp Lormpa that just came out of the sarcophagus. And take a big old swing. All right, go ahead and give it to me. Damage? No. Uh, 13, unfortunately. Oh, no, the 13 will hit it. Oh. Yep. Just barely hit it. Uh, five slashing damage. You weren't the raging, Bar-Lorpa, right? No. The Bar Lorpa laughs. Uh, as it speaks some sort of common. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do on it? Well, I. Nah, I can't. It really wouldn't do anything. You could go into a rage if you'd like. Would you uh, backtrack the uh, rage damage? Sure, that's fine. Still your All right, yeah. All right, I'll throw out the rage damage then. Okay, for, is that next uh, for two? Yes. Awesome. So you slash into this bar Lorpa and it roars uh, angrily. And you see it has like huge fanged teeth inside of it, uh, inside of its mouth. And it, it looks vicious. Uh, all right. And actually, it is now the Bar Lorpa's turn. Uh, the Bar Lorpa is going to attempt to bite you, Lana. It beats its chest. And uh, it's going to attack you recklessly. Uh, what is your armor class? 15. All righty. It bites you for seven piercing damage. Ow. And then punches you for 10 bludgeoning damage. Ow. And then punches you a third, a second time. Or 19. Uh, yes. so. Oh, what was that? A 19? Oh, I thought it was 12. Nah, he's got advantage because he's attacking recklessly. Now, keep in mind, oh, you have yeah. all of this because you are raging. So it's actually 3, 5, and 7. Mm-hmm. Are you still kicking? So the damage I took is 3, 5, and 7? Yes. Sorry, I was, I was announcing that to hit, not the damage. Okay. I think you're still up after that. Um, yes. All right. So you have survived the Bar Lorpa's onslaught, uh, and then it leaps 40 feet into the air uh, and slams into the ground uh, adjacent to you, Muldock. Uh, you get a free opportunity attack if you'd like. Oh. Lana? Oh, well, I thought you said Molda. No, no, Lana, you can get a free opportunity attack because he's running away. He's leaping away from you. I'm going to take it. All right. Uh, ah. Unfortunately, not connecting. Man, the rolls tonight. All right. Molda, if you move. Okay. So, clown bike still in tow. This guy in my. Uh, your breath smells. I don't like it. It really stinks. Uh, it really it's It's terrible. It's artificial um, peach is the flavor. Oh gosh, that's the worst kind of flavor. Oh man, so bad. Here, uh, how about uh, how about this? Oh no! Oh, no. You reach out with the joy buzzer and it just buzz, it zaps him and he goes, doesn't seem to care. Oh gosh, um, uh, uh, bye, buddy. And I try to move. You. All right, begin to pedal away. Uh, the Oron <laughs> yeah. Florpa uh, is going to make a fist attack. He can't really bite you as you are. <laughs> so he okay. punches at you. Oh, no, God. no, and I go down. <laughs> punches you. Your clown bike just kind of <laughs> climbs to the ground next to you. Uh, still there because it's not concentration. <laughs> and you are unconscious. Oh, shit. Um, yes, I am. All right. 
we move to the next in the initiative order. Dingle, what would you like to do? There's now 30 feet from you. There's the giant bamuscled Barlormpa. <clears throat> I hate my situation. It looks like I'm screwed. Um, but I will give him something, all right? But it's going to be spicy. Okay. Boom. Damn oh, no. It. The rocket whizzes by the bar Lorpa and it looks toward you like, oh. Oh dear, oh dear, and I just run away. <laughs> okay, you start whoop, 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 running like 30 feet away. <laughs> <laughs> into the jungle, or into the forest. Yeah, right. I, 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 well, I need cover. John, there is a, a the terrifying bar Lorpa right near you. What would you uh, like to I'm do? going to bonus action, use uh -huh. my two sorcery points to make a first level spell slot. Oh shit, alright. Oh then... no, chaos bolt him, okay. That's a 23 to hit. I was like, what is your chaos bolt? Is it also a gun? No, this is a shadowy darkness that emanates from John that no one has ever seen before. Oh boy. The shadowy darkness that no one has ever seen before slams into the bar Lorpa. Uh, would you like to do force damage or cold damage? We're gonna do force because yeah. this is a shadowy force doing this. Eh. Good call. It's uh, it is now thematic. It slams into the bar Lorpa and it <clears throat> reels in pain. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? Oh, I'm sorry, John. You should have had advantage and attacked recklessly. Well, 18. Wait, did, wait, shouldn't I have advantage as oh, well? I'm so sorry. You also should have had advantage. Go ahead and roll that again. Uh, your your rocket, Dingleheim. I, I would have had a seven. Rip. Okay. And no critical hits. So <laughs> everything just remained the same. Would you like to move it all, John? The bar Lorpa is right near you. Not quite yeah. like an opportunity range. I'll, I'll get out of there. You start wheeling away. Are you wheeling toward. Uh, Dingle Heimel, or just in a different direction? Are you splitting up? Are you scattering? Or are you staying together? We're scattering. Okay, so you scatter in a different direction. Um, Spuds, it's your move. You don't think it sees you. It's about 10 feet from you, though. All right. I'll pop out of the snow. Uh-huh. It's a snow. Okay. You shoot it in the back with the short bow. 14 hit? Yeah, 14 hit. Um, it's got an AC 13. The regular Lauren was have an AC of 11. Mm. So it's a you do have a down ally to about 10 feet away from me if you're if, if I'm doing my math. Just saying. Yeah. Well, the the problem is you're right next to the bar Lorpa right now. Yeah, I know. I know. I know that's a big problem. I understand. But it, in case he moves, just like you know. So uh, oh, yeah, wow. you, you connect. It uh, hurts him pretty bad, <laughs> and you duck back onto the snow right as it's like turning around. <laughs> It's looking around trying to find you, but cannot. Kind of, I tunnel my way a little bit closer to. Uh, <laughs> You're just tunneling to, under uh, the snow, Tordo. Okay. Tordo, uh, yeah. Yeah. Tordo. Moldock, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moldock, yeah. Uh, Asbjorn uh, continues battling the regular Oram Lornpas. Uh, he's gonna chop two of them in a half. There are now eight of them. Uh, the Lornpas are gonna continue battling Asbjorn. Um, and Lana, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm closer to the regular Ompas now, so uh, I'll take my short bow. I'll, I'll travel a little bit further out of uh, the Mega Ompas range and uh, uh -huh. take my short bow and uh, start picking off some of the small. Okay, cool. You take out your short bow, <laughs> fire. Actually, no, I'm going to use my javelin instead. Awesome. Whip your javelin. Ah. Oh, no, you have no the if it's at the bar lump, it has you have vanity. Yeah, were you going for the little ones or the big guy? Little ones. Yeah, that's what I thought. Unfortunately, the javelin goes wide. Man, rough rolls tonight, uh, for Lana. Um, more, the javelin more for everyone, actually. I uh, yeah, except for me. I've been, I've been really good master. or really bad. Yeah. All right, uh, end of your turn, Lana. It is the Bar Lorpa. The Bar Lorpa is going to. What's he gonna start with? 
look around, not see spuds anywhere, and turn invisible. He turns invisible. Oh no. And then gigantic footsteps clearly show where it's going as it chases after John. Uh, John, you just hear like thundering the? steps. And no, you see nothing walk up to you, but you see these huge footsteps stop right next to you. Uh, that's the end of the Barlorpa's turn. Uh, Mulda, can you give me a death saving throw? Sure, but may I remind everyone that whenever I make this death saving throw, that I do have potions of healing on my person that somebody can use. Yeah, I mean, you also all have uh, the good berries from Asbjorn. We also all have the good berries from Asbjorn. This is true. So, uh, anyways, like to... I am... Go ahead, Mulda, give it to me. Give you, you the crit. death It doesn't even matter. You just get up, right? I know, right? That would be the best. But uh, I didn't crit, sadly. But you're not dead. But I'm not dead. And I did succeed very well. Like always, I never fail, so. Indeed. Uh, Professor Dingleheimel, what would you like to do? Hmm, I guess he, hmm, it makes, how far is Mur, 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 Murdoch away from the left? I can't say his Mulder. name right. Mulder. 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 I'm sorry. 60 feet, because you ran again. He's pretty far. Hmm, well, would I have disadvantage if I used an attack against him, even though I can clearly see where he is? Against who? The Bar Bar Lomba. Lomba. Yeah. Uh, now, actually, from 60 feet away, you can't even tell where he is. Uh, what's your passive perception? 13. Um, yeah, you actually can't see where he is from how far away you are. If I move closer, uh, I peek closer 30 feet out. I must be yeah. brave. You, you scoot up ahead 30 feet and you're looking at, you don't see him. You could ready an action to shoot at him, or you could shoot at one of the little Dormpas. I would shoot the little ones. They okay. probably are gonna give him a... Okay, here, here you go. It tastes rockets! Okay, you blast one, you hit him. For seven, seven. fire damage. Probably right. the one that uh, that was hurt before. Yeah, the yeah one exactly. Before. So that means there were seven regular Lorempos left. All right. And you've already scooted up, so that's the end of your move, uh, Dingle Heimel. John, it's your yes, move. Yes, maybe. Hmm. I've used each of my secret weapons once. I've used a dynamite. I've used a catapult, a Herculean throwing, and I've used whatever that darkness was. I only have one option left. I'm going to have to take five pounds of snow from between these two footprints and send them straight up. Okay. And do what with it? <laughs> so, <laughs> you gonna just catapult I'm, the I'm targeting at him? five pounds of snow uh -huh. Between the two footprints that I see, you're trying to hit the, or, the bar Lorpa in the nuts. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. Or give him an enema. One of the two. Oh, God. Whoa! All right. Whoa! All right. Let, let's keep it a little <laughs> more on the PG side of things. Um, <laughs> go ahead and put your attack roll with the catapult. It's at an attack roll. Oh, what is he it, needs is to make a roll? save. Okay, yeah, dexterity. Save. All right. He got a seven. All right, he fails, which means that he takes the damage, which means it hits. Yeah, you hit him. You see it just kind of stop right at like what is probably head level for you because you are, in, you know, you're not you're not standing up. Uh, hit him for eight. All right, That's that part. Let me go. You hear this yell. Uh, but apparently it doesn't hurt him that much because he keeps his concentration. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Uh, it was a good he's try. within I'll off give, attack. I'll give judging. him disadvantage because it's real cold. Okay. I think he's still good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is he within off attack range? Uh, looking at it? Yeah, he probably is. Alright. John then closes his eyes and sits back in his wheelchair. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. <laughs> just ready. Just accepting yep. it. All right. Uh, Spuds? Spuds appears Pops next to uh, Moldock. Uh-huh. Uh, and and uh, I guess I'll use one of Moldock's potions. All right, awesome. Moldock. You get a bunch of that's way more health Butter. than the other thing would have done. Health the Butter. Which one? The, the small one or the big one? You get two choices. I, I I'll use the small one. That one, right? Uh, I'd, small say, one. I'd say that, like, as a player. Oh yeah, yeah. Which would you prefer? Yeah. Isn't it? Is the small one two d four, right? Yeah, two d four plus two. Versus... And the what big one is two d eight. No, it's forty four plus four. Yeah. Forty four plus four. Hmm. I, I think I think this is one of those go big or go home moments. So I'm gonna All go right. big. So okay. You reach out and grab the biggest health potion you can go. Ah! Oh, I heal for thirteen. Excellent. Get back up. You and can do it. <laughs> well, Goodbye. Not, life returns to you and but disappears beneath the snow again. <laughs> oh boy. Um. All right, and actually, uh, chat made a great point. Uh, the Oran Plurpa is now technically visible to everyone because of the snow sticking out. Just yes. floating in the air, seemingly. Um, I'm sorry, the ice cream. Um, it's yes. Asbjorn's turn. Asbjorn goes, uh, he just swings his axe twice and drops down two more. There are now five regular Lorimpas, and he goes, don't worry, just stay safe. I will protect you shortly. Uh, and that's all he can do. Uh, Lorimpas uh, are going to attack Asbjorn. Lana, what would you like to do? Well, seeing as my other roles have been just trash, uh, I'm going to opt for the uh, higher damage. Uh, all right. And what are you going for? Just regular one of the regular or Lorimpas? Regular or ones. I I'm too far away from the mm -hmm. mega while you cleave it in twain, uh, there are now only four regular Lorpas remaining. As you rush up behind Asbjorn, the frost giant looks and says, Oh, hello there! I am Asbjorn! Uh, and then, oh, he dodges one of the Lorpas. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, -huh. uh I can't really do anything else. Alrighty. And then we are back to the oh the bar lorpa the fist john comes out at you i'm not going to give him advantage for being unseen because i'll say you can see him with uh with the catapult with the snow but uh, no no my eyes are closed it's fine okay. oh no he you wants to 25. take this oh no i'm gonna this seven is seven points torture all right up. i'm still up <laughs> he punches you in the face. Punches you a second time. Uh, he is no longer invisible. Uh, for yeah. is that a fifteen to hit? That that hit. Are you still up? Uh, hold on. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, what's this? Nope. Oh, he. Punches you and down you go, and then he turns and leaps uh, over toward you, um, Professor Dingleheimel, and lands on you mouth first, or at least he tries to. Oh as dear. He goes to bite you. Well, not so fast. Uh, <laughs> give me one second. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> bring up your shield device, and his mouth just kind of blah. Stops on a uh, like your invisible force field and slides down onto the ground. Uh, the bar Lorpa is next to you though now. All right, oh, dear. you're back up. Oh, excellent! A Great. A little help, please. Okay, sure, no problem. That guy totally needs to chill out. <laughs> yes, you hit him with the ray of frost for seven. All right. I am a clown. What do you expect? Yeah, he's now also slower, which is big for the stew. You also see that John is uh, lying in the snow, his wheelchair sitting there empty. Wait. Some short ways away. Something is missing here. 
I, I, I know what it, I know something's missing here, but it'll wait for a second, because I'm right. gonna have to, I, I'm gonna have to use my movement to make it so that that big guy can't move to me, not by normal means. Okay, so you just run to... somewhere off. Yes. Okay. But but still close enough to where on my next turn I could get back to uh, uh, the the wheelchair. Thumbs Kay. up. Gotcha. All right, Professor Dingleheimel. The Bar Lorpa stands above you, slathering, ready to devour you. Um, hello there, big guy. Um, I really don't know what to say here. I am out of options. Um, <laughs> I just look at my, I just look, I look at my belt, and there's like, I have one of my, I still have an extra dagger with me, and I'm just like, hmm. Well, might as well try. Take this, fiend. The classic Shank Wizard, stabby stab. Science! I shall dissect you for science! Oh, uh, this, this is your dissection scalpel you're attacking with? Yes. And... Uh, Unfortunately, oh no. Oh dear, guys, guys, a little help! All right, John can give me a death saving throw. Oh no. No, not John. Not Fudge, John. Your move. How far am I from John? About 30 feet. All right, well, like a cartoon cat <laughs> rabbit moving under dirt or like a mole, you just, uh, Spuds moves to John. Okay, just burying on, burrowed under the snow. Mm -hmm, shoves a good berry in his mouth. All right, John, you're at one eight point. You can do it. All right. <laughs> Thank you, goblin friend. I'll remember this. As you're in, don't worry, just hold on, and he cleaves, and oh, he critically misses with one of them. Uh, there are now only three Lorpas remaining, uh, mm -hmm. and the Bar Lorpa. Mm -hmm. um, um, that makes it the Lorpas. Uh, the Lorpas attack Asbjorn still. Asbjorn's looking like really beat up at this point. Um, even though there are only three left, Lana, it looks like he could go down any moment. Uh, what would you like to do? It's your turn. Uh, well, I'll use my bonus action to give him my uh, good berries and then take another swing at another one. Uh. All right. You toss the good berries to Asbjorn. He catches them in one hand. You swing with your great axe in the other and go ahead and give me the damage. Um, I'd maim it, but uh, is that including your rage damage? Um, Definitely I didn't, not. No, because I, I didn't take damage or hit the last turn. Uh, you don't have to previous. hit, you just have to attack. Oh, you can miss. He did attack, yeah, he did attack, yeah. so that does count. Uh, I've attacked every turn then, so yes, yeah, exactly. another two damage. That kills one. So with that, you chop one of the remaining Wormpas in half. The two that are left look like they're debating fleeing. I'm gonna roll a wisdom saving throw in there. Um, we move. Is that anything else you'd like to do? Uh, nope, I'm out of time. Okay. The bar Lorpa is gonna go and Dingleheimel um, um, looks at um, you. Um, um, can, can we talk about this? Can, can we talk Candy about this? Candy from you! Can we, can we please, and it please? bites you. 18 to hit. Owie! Owie, I'm down. All right, 15 my, points I, I, of damage. That goes through my shield and all my hit points. It grrr, bites you and kind of like throws you. You slam into a tree and tumble down to the ground unconscious. What direction? Towards my direction or towards the other direction? Canonically, his just his position hasn't changed, so he's still okay. only 30 feet from you. Okay. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> even with the reduced speed, the Lorpa can the Bar Lorpa still has 30 feet left. And the oh, no. Lorpa turns and I'm runs 40 feet away. You. You're 40? Oh, hey. Yeah, I got the little, I got the, the clown bike. Come on. Yeah, okay. you the clown bike. <laughs> so you can just drive by around the Bar Lorpa next turn. Um, That's the idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he can attack anyone. Actually, Spud, what was your stealth? The 14? Yeah, you're good. He doesn't see you. All right. Yeah, you're, you're good. Or Lorpa can't use his remaining two attacks this turn. Um, but is he going to head towards me anyway? Oh, yeah. 
Okay. He runs right towards you. Awesome. Um, Moldock, it's your turn. Fan fantastic. I laugh at him, go around him, but not like within the, his attack range. Go to my friend who is down. Uh-huh. <laughs> right? And uh -huh. I'm going to then uh, give him uh, my one of my small potions. I'll roll 2d4 plus 2 or 9. Yes, yes. You can roll it. Go for it. All right, so you put a healing potion down. Dingleheim will throw it, and Dingleheim will... Uh, you are conscious once more. Awesome. All right. Do I have my extra 10 feet of movement, or did I use... Well, 40 of my movement. Go scooting around him. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm over here <laughs> behind Dingle. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This guy's scary. All right. You're welcome, uh, and I ding my little bell. <laughs> and Dingleheim, it's your turn. Oh, this thank you. Was looking I pretty want revenge. I, I have now. I, I have a fiery passion in my eyes. Why won't you die already? And then I, and the bar lump is gonna get rocketed in the All back. Right. You unleash one of your rockets and fires forward and slams into the side of the head of the bar lumpa. It tries to dodge, but it's just a little too slow. Uh, from the the lasting effects of the ray of frost. All right, it's looking real bad. Uh, is there and then I'm going. Like and then I'm going to uh, move away because I don't want him. Because his teeth rather hurt. Mm. So you just start to limp away. Uh, you only get 15 feet because so you had to stand up, but yeah. you're now just a little bit further than Maldock. So Maldock oh, is, is the. <laughs> well, That's Jonathan, so great. It's your move. about 30 feet from you, this bar Lorpa. Uh, and there's two more other Lorpas left, right? Yes. Uh, the bar Lorpa looks like it's on the brink, though. A Wait, good hit could probably it? kill it. Oh, All right, John. Yeah. John's turn. Yeah. Never mind. Takes out his rifle and shoot at the bar Lorpa. All right. Oh, that'll hit. Was he attacking recklessly? He unfortunately did not attack recklessly last night. Okay, well, one damage. Yeah. You actually finish him off by one extra damage, knocking him to 53 of his 52 hit points. John, how do you finish off the Bar Lorpa as it bellows in rage? Watching your friend the on the eye. clown bike right around it. I shoot <laughs> it in the eye. You just pull out the gun, take aim. The, uh, the blast of the gun echoes through the forest as the Bar Lorpa turns and boom, right in the head and it oh, oh, collapses into the snow. Um, and as the Bar Lorpa lies defeated, uh, the two remaining uh, Lorpas go to flee but start to melt. Uh, and Lana, as you go to like maybe take an opportunity attack against them and as Bjorn does as well you see they're just just kind of melting away as the Bar Lorpa their god is now slain and you all stand remaining I mean still alive actually in the frigid sugar plum forest of the Big Rock Candy Mountains and as Bjorn the frost giant looks at you all whoa you have all done very well Yes, and we have the oh. oh. your stuff, but I thank you for the bloody rest. Mess. I'm the best. I never miss. You're welcome. Can I'm... someone help me back up into my chair? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, I'm here you go. I'm busy talking at, to the frost giant. I mean, like... frost, he walks up to all of you, and uh, and he's looking at uh, to you, Lon, and like, that was some very good axemanship. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> Thank you. Ugh. You don't look so good. Actually, you all look pretty beat up. I'm fine. I'm not, don't don't lie. I'm not beat up. I'm actually okay. I have, you know, most of my health. I'm I'm mostly. Maybe it's just the clown makeup. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Would anyone like some good berries? Mm, 
I'll take one, but uh, are you a magic? Do you, you cast spells? I, I could use some expertise for science. Oh. Do you know how to make good berries? Nope. Will you teach me? I can try. Oh, yes, yes, more science. Unfortunately, Asbjorn is not able to teach you how to make good berries. He tries, but it, he's just not not a good teacher. Mm, he's I'm disappointed, but he tried. Well, anywho, uh, good work, you all. Let us head back to King Has the Bro and get our payment for this job well done. That was the exit of the Underworld? What? Ugh. I do well. not know, but I need to go in search of my poor mount, Matilda. She must be lost within the icy wilderness. Otherwise, she would have come to my aid. They attacked me when I was sleeping, you see? Uh, no, I don't see. I wasn't there. Okay. Oh. Well, good job. And uh, as you return to the Candy Kingdom, there is there's no big parade or anything. Um, things have been kept on the DL. The guard uh, meets you outside, and uh, after confirming with Asbjorn that a job has been well done, uh, you are all paid your uh, your fee of, uh, of 100 Bartholomew bucks and one point of experience. And you have completed this mission, and none of you died. Which, good job. Good teamwork. Yeah. yeah, yeah it was, it was hard, but uh, ow, those teeth still hurt. Ow. This game was about me exclusively. I was the best. Just... Can you roll a deception check to make it all only about you? Uh, Absolutely. And you can save face for this. this is <laughs> okay, of course, of course. You get a plus 27 because we got 27 viewers. <laughs> Man, that's a really good roll. That's a 50, what, 5? <laughs> yeah, 55. Oh, about Maldon. Yeah, he was the hero. <laughs> uh, good, good job, job, everybody. Thank you guys for 